Good morning, everybody. Um, before I start, I just want to briefly say I can't even begin to express to you how excited I am to be here. Uh, as Ed had mentioned, my background is actually in negotiation theory. So uh, for the last 12, 15 years, I've been working with kind of executives and people, advising them, teaching them how to negotiate, sitting in rooms, helping them kind of negotiate better deals. Um, and what happened about seven years ago was a friend of mine got hired by Mozilla uh, to be the module owner for user interface. And he came to me one day, and we'd known each other from college, and he said, listen, I need some help. I I've got some employees, and I've got a whole bunch of people in the community. And, and there are some times when they end up fighting. And uh, I need some help, so what should I do about that? And so I started to advise and started to help them, and it really started me down the path uh, of thinking about open source. And the reason why I'm so excited to be, to be here is that you know, to, to get my crash course, I did nothing but listen to kind of every podcast I could get out of OzCon. So there's a whole bunch of people in the room here who are really heroes to me and helped me learn kind of to how to think and how to kind of how open source communities operate and apply the, the, the kind of the theories and the ideas that I have into this space. Um, all of that kind of, kind of came to a head at a very specific moment where I had a kind of a unique or maybe a not unique experience thinking about and, and working with open source. And it's when I submitted a, my first uh, bug to Bugzilla. And I was really proud. I was kind of feeling quite good about it. I, I spent a lot of time researching and thinking about it. And so naturally, I wanted to go and tell my friends. So I went on Facebook and Twitter. And I said, hey, here's this bug I submitted. I'm really excited. And the first thing that happened to me was a relatively senior person in the community uh, immediately responded uh, back to me kind of saying, that's just a duplicate. <laughs> so that was maybe not the most exciting moment for me. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things that are really interesting about this moment. That, that one of the interesting things is actually he was probably right. More than 50% of the times, uh, bugs actually are duplicates. So he was using the science of open source in a very, very good way, or the science of community management in a good way, just maybe without some of the art that we would like to see in it. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but the, the bigger part was is I kind of figured out, wow, leaders really matter because they send very strong norms in the community and they kind of tell people how to behave. Uh, but the other part was is if this was an experience that a lot of people had, they may never come back. And when I think about open source communities and, and I compare them to other types of organizations, you know, other co like companies, they have financial capital, they might even have intellectual capital, uh, they have social capital because they have the people that work for them. If you're in an open source community, what you mostly have is social capital. It's the people who are there to help you to kind of contribute to the project, um, who make it an interesting and fun and engaging place to be. And so if what we depend on is social capital, how are we managing that? How are we thinking about it? How are we recruiting new people who can come and like, be part of our community and get excited about it, as, as excited about it as we are? So uh, you know, I think the, the, the thing that gets me excited about where we are right now is last year, Jono gave a wonderful talk about how he thought we were kind of at the verge of a renaissance in, in community management. And I actually think that he's right. I actually think there is, we are now at a place where we have the tools to engage in a science of community management. And what I mean by that is, you know, I think about the Renaissance, and it was like there was this wonderful moment where science made art better because we began to understand what made for good art, and then art made science better because we were able, better able to show what was going on in the world around us and tell people about it so they could educate themselves. And so I think that we're at this place where we can fuse those, and most importantly, we can, there are methodologies and ideas that allow us to do replicable results that we're no longer just kind of flailing around figuring out what makes us effective, we can actually do repeatable experiments. So um, let's talk briefly about the art. So uh, you know, I think we've been spending a lot of time wrestling with the art of community management. Um, I just love this tweet because it was said in jest, but I think we've all been here at some point uh, while working on a project. And it kind of strikes to me as like there's a, there's a deeper thing that's kind of going on uh, when you express this, which is, uh, very often when people get involved in an open source project, it's because you know, they have excellent coding skills or they want to learn how to code. And they, you know, they're first, they're initially lurking, they're kind of like checking things out. But most of their time is actually spent coding. But if you're good, like if you're engaging, compelling, it's not long before people start kind of asking you to do other things. And lo and behold, you kind of suddenly discover that you know, actually a lot of your time is being spent like engaged in community management and less and less time spent coding, which is really actually that you're negotiating with people and you're kind of engaged in mediation. You're kind of trying to get cajole people to do things they don't want to do, uh, getting people to kind of get along even though they don't want to get along. And in fact, the more senior you become in a community, uh, very often it begins to feel like this, which is that uh, most of your time is just down, down, like dealing with other people. And, and I think the important thing here is my girlfriend reminded me of this, is like she said, or my partner, she said, you know, if this is what your chart looks like, that is your job. 
And there's two key pieces I want to get away from here. The first is, um, I think that we're actually kind of engaged in a little bit of a fraud, which is that we tell people that we live in a meritocracy and that coding skills are what makes you, what makes you work in an open source community. And so we kind of hire or get people engaged based on coding skills. But when I look at the individual people or the projects that have really done well, it's actually because they're incredibly skilled in all sorts of soft skills. So you get kind of hired for coding skills, but you, but you often get promoted based on your soft skills. And I don't think that we're explicit enough about that. We've got to tell people that's the social contract that they're entering into. And then I think we have a responsibility to help them do better. And so uh, many of you in this room, you are hyper-skilled. You've become very successful in open source communities. You've run open source communities very well because actually you're skilled at all of the soft stuff. And what I want to share with you in part is that there's a science. We can bring a science to this art. Like I come out of the negotiation realm. There is an enormous literature there's a code to thinking about how we collaborate that we can draw upon um, that you know, would make people who I think are highly skilled but unaware of their skills, aware of those skills so they can transmit it to other people, uh, they can share what they're kind of like, why it is that they're good. And when, and when I, I look, like, there's like all sorts of like kind of moments in when this really strikes me as would be hugely useful. This was a bug in, uh, in Bugzilla that kind of got out of control. And uh, you, know, you can really see it got out of control because you can see how tiny the like, little scroll bar is. And so just like this enormously wrong, long thread. And there's a very simple social hack that you can engage in to kind of help understand how this broke down. So here's one that I use as a kind of social hack out of the negotiation space, which is at any given moment in a conversation, usually people are engaged in one of four skills. They're either engaged in inquiry, which means they're asking questions, like they're trying to find out something. And I mean they're asking real questions. They're not asking questions like, how long have you been this stupid? That's like, that's not a question. That's like <laughs> me telling you that you're stupid with a question mark. Um, they're paraphrasing. They're trying to say, hey, like, did I understand you correctly? Here's what I think I heard you say. They're acknowledging in an emotional state. They're like, oh, that must have been really frustrating. Or they're saying, oh, this is what I think we should do. And when you look at this thread, there's like 70 or 80 comments, and not once does anyone ever paraphrase? Do they ever ask a question? Or do they ever acknowledge that someone might be feeling frustrated about something? All that happens is that people show up and say, this is what should happen. And if we had even just some basic kind of awareness of our skills, that thread could have been resolved like about 50 comments earlier just by actually trying to engage in some inquiry, engage in some paraphrasing, try to understand what the different voices were trying to argue for, and actually find some common ground that, that actually in the end ultimately existed, but we had to go through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get there. So I think there's some really simple social hacks that we could be using, and I'm really interested in how we kind of embed negotiation theory into the tools that we use. So even really simple things, like when we ask for someone to submit a bug, you know, do we show them what a good response looks like versus what a bad response looks like so we can model some behavior to them? Or maybe you know, we could ask why, like not just what did you expect to happen, but what were you trying to accomplish? What was like the goal of what you were trying to do in the software at that moment? Because we might discover, hey, you know, you weren't actually, like, it wasn't that there was an error in the software or that it didn't do that you wanted. It's just that, that what you were trying to do actually exists somewhere else. And this is a support issue, and we could resolve that much more quickly. So getting better at inquiry. And then also just actually thinking differently about how we talk about the results and how we engage people. So like for me on Begzilla, like maybe we should have a little newbie badge next to me. I know some communities are starting to do this because you know, rather than yelling me for being an idiot, you could actually just say, oh, Dave is a newbie, so I'm going to walk him through the steps. Or maybe English is my second language. And so while I took a lot of time to compose this, it didn't actually come out all that well. So you could be a little bit softer on me. Um, but I think also on the science part of open source, we could be doing a whole lot better. Um, one of the things that strikes me as so interesting is that there's this enormous amount of data that we collect about how open source communities use, uh, work. And it's often locked in programs like Bugzilla. It's made available by programs like GitHub where you can tap into it. But you know, these interfaces, they, kind of, they don't enable for effective management. Um, and, and GitHub makes some effort to try to visualize some of the stuff. I'm not sure that their tools actually help us from a management perspective. Um, they, they do bring some art to the science. Uh, but what I'm really interested in is how we bring real art into that science. And so, for example, this is a, a, a dashboard that I created with a team from Mozilla where we mapped kind of what were the, uh, the patches that people were submitting and what was their patch history to see how active they'd been. And what I really like about this is from a, from a purely like community management perspective, we can then do something like there's a check marks down the side. We can strip that away. And all of a sudden, now you're looking at people who are only volunteers. And we can begin to see how long it's been since they last landed a patch. And so how many days has gone, have gone by? So like, there's some people I've circled there because it's like been 45 days since they last submitted a patch, and they've been pretty regular. So if you're a module owner and social capital is the most important thing that you have, maybe you should pick up the phone and call that person. 
Because maybe you've done something to anger them, or maybe they're feeling frustrated, or maybe they just had a baby and they're like a whole different type of hell. But you know, like, <laughs> you should find out what's going on with them, because if you lose them, then you've lost what part of what makes your community great and good. And even if they're gonna leave and never gonna come back, you should still find out about why they left, because that is incredibly important data to capture. So that at least you know what happened, so either you don't do it again in the future, or you accept, yes, we're gonna lose a certain number of people because we just have to behave this way. Um, Another, this is uh, Are We Growing Yet at Mozilla, where we're starting to track the number of people who come to our page and, want, and say they want to contribute. And where we're really going with this, and David Boswell is doing great work around this, is actually trying to figure out what are the conversion points. So how many people are showing up, but then how many of them are ending up creating an account? How many of them are submitting a bug? How many of them are submitting a, bug, a, a, a patch? So we can actually begin to track how many people are we pulling into the community and how successful are we at engaging them? Because if we want to grow our social capital, we have to think about how we're managing this type of data. Um, and, and I have a call for action in part around this. I spent a lot of time in the Gov 2.0 space, and the tech community has been very, very kind of engaged on telling governments, you should do open data. That if you do open data, there's all sorts of interesting innovation that's going to happen. And yet, when I look around the open source world, I have yet to see a single open source community with an open data portal. And if GitHub taught us anything, it taught us that you know, like when, when we allow for forking, we actually empower the individual user to go and innovate on the code base. Well, I think we should empower the individual, individual user to understand what the data is that's powering our community, so they can go in there and they can analyze it, they can play with it, and they could create their own dashboards, they could find out where the bottlenecks are, and they could make our community more effective. And I can imagine all sorts of innovations. So uh, one of the ones that I think would be most interesting is maybe just a little program that tells you how long you should expect to wait for code review. So when you upload a patch, we could look at what's the average wait time on the project and what's the average wait time on the module, and we tell you, hey, you know, you should expect to wait probably seven days. So rather than having your patch like kind of disappear into a black hole and like kind of ping people every once in a while and not know if you're being ignored, um, we could tell you, hey, here's the average wait time, and then after that time has gone by, then you can start annoying people. And I think we'd actually reduce the frustration level by a fair bit, and probably the volume of email by a fair bit as well. Um, some other innovations I think would be interesting are like predictive bug tracking. Uh, my friend Diedrich Van Leer, who's now the met, uh, head of metrics at, at Wikimedia, uh, we were trying to play with Bugzilla data to try to predict when someone submits like two or three patches, can we learn from the type of uh, bugs or bugs that they're submitting? Do we, can we predict what type of user they're going to be? Are they going to submit lots of bugs that are totally useless? Are they going to submit lots of bugs that are actually really, really helpful? And if they're doing the former, can we course correct them very early on by changing, like educating them or doing an intervention that makes them a much more effective contributor? Um, we could also begin to predict, based on some things we knew about bugs and the people involved, what was the likelihood of a bug getting patched? And so it would be nice maybe for you to see, wow, this bug I just submitted actually has a very low probability. And so then you could try to go figure out ways uh, to make it more likely to get patched. Or you might, you might learn that if you start contributing to a bug, it actually decreases the odds of it getting patched. So maybe you should take a step back and think more carefully about you know, before participating in that particular one. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think people are, are beginning to figure out that it's not always the best code that's going to win, that actually community management is a core competency to making open source effective. And I think what makes me so excited is that we actually have a science now for looking at our communities and thinking about the data that's being generated and, and using that to change the way that we work. And we also have an opportunity to kind of get skilled up and get aware about the skills that make us effective. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about building tools. I'm really excited about kind of getting people skilled up and trained um, to be more effective community managers, no matter who they are and what they're doing in the community. I have a bunch of blog posts I've written about this, um, and I'm running a session later this afternoon. So I hope this was engaging, kind of teased you a little bit, and thank you so much for having me.